And, and if, if I'm a GM and I'm in one of those, uh, if I'm making decisions, he's a special player. There's, no, there's nobody mm -hmm. like him. I get it. But my take on this is that if I'm a GM, I sign this guy as a hitter only. And I'll tell you why. He's already breaking down. He's 29. Ruben, I'm with old. you, but he said, but he will probably say no to that, right? It, or at it, least it, until he and can. Then, then I don't sign him. If I'm comparing right. him to the rest of the world as far as the offense uh, alone, I mean, we can bring up the numbers here. He, to, to me, the comp is Aaron Judge. He's close. Aaron Judge. Yeah. He's got a lot of things. And when you start talking about what he is as far as his what his platform was, his platform year, obviously that you have to factor in some right. of that pitching stuff, but. My take is that this guy is not, if you get anything pitching out of him, that's a bonus. As a hitter, hard hit percentage ex Woba, that's the quality of contact, 98th percentile at the very top. Ex Woba as a pitcher now, that was down to 63rd percent, but the strikeout percentage, he misses bats at an elite rate at 94th percent. He might be the best pitcher in the game if he just pitched. You're a general <laughs> manager this offseason. Give me your view of Otani, money, concerns, everything. Well, I think the injury and the surgery certainly lowered the ceiling, but the floor is still high enough for him to earn the biggest contract ever and by far the biggest free agent contract ever. I know that before the injury, the numbers being about bandied about were astronomical, 600 million, right? And that's a testament to how impressive he is because usually you don't see the the highs increase by that much, right? Yeah, I mean, right. Mike, Mike Trout is still at 426.5. That's the, the high Aaron Judge at 360 for a free agent. Yep. Yeah, roster concerns. He takes up mm -hmm. a DH spot. You need a six-man rotation. I'm with you in the sense that I don't think he offers any extra hidden value, as if his wins above replacement totals aren't high enough. Everyone's always trying to give him extra credit, right? right. Because he's two players in one roster spot. But because of the constraints that you mentioned, I don't really think there is any hidden value there. I think it goes against the trends in the game these days, which is that you use the DH slot as sort of a rotating place to put people just to rest everyone right now. I don't think anyone would mind just slotting him in as DH every day if he's the best hitter in baseball. And there are plenty of teams that go with six man rotations even without Shohei Otani. So it's not that out of the norm. So I don't think that's going to scare anyone away, but I agree it, it doesn't give him any extra value. The top teams I found pay their best player 14 to 15 percent of the total payroll. If I'm a big market, right, and I want him, I have $285 million payroll. By the way, I'm in the top three if I do. I'm going eight years, 40 million per. Yeah, you know about the winner's curse, right? That the uh, the person who usually emerges with the free agent is the one that's willing to go highest and sometimes in retrospect too high. I think it's, uh, it's going to be the over on your estimate there, certainly. Really? You know, I think that I've talked to a lot of front office people and gotten their thoughts, and there's not a ton of confidence, I wouldn't say, in their predictions either. But I keep hearing, even post-injury, somewhere in the 400 to 500 range. And I think it's partly that, hey, if he's just a DH, he could be the best hitter in baseball. Hopefully he pitches. The news about his elbow, as far as we can tell, seems to be about the best case scenario, right? That the ligament was intact but detached, that it seems like maybe he had the internal brace repair and could come back a little more quickly. And also, because he's so unusual, there's the fallback plan of, hey, if he doesn't come out of this as one of the top pitchers in baseball anymore, you could always try to use him as a DH slash closer. Or if mm -hmm. he gives up pitching for good, Maybe he's a plus everyday defensive corner outfielder. I think I'd be willing to go as high as, say, 11 years, 480. That's, uh, it's, it's not going to be 11, my opening offer. 11. I think, that's, I think, hey, look, look at the contract signed last winter, Brian. I mean, everyone's going 11, 12, 13 years. Yeah. But the other thing is, who are the impact bats out there this winter, right? It's Otani and, and not a lot of other guys. The butts he puts in the seats, the extra attention, the endorsement deals, the marketing revenue. Uh, so 11 <laughs> years, 45 million per, and you're doing that to keep the AAV down. Yeah, I mean, look, he might, I guess, decide to go with a shorter term deal, right? He could say, hey, let me establish that I'm fully healthy again and that I can be the two way star and then I'll get back into the market. Or we could end up with some complicated structure like a Julio deal where you have playing time based escalators and options and opt out so that he retains some flexibility and doesn't get locked into a situation. Yeah, he's where saying he's no on to that. I don't, 